And then we'll end it up with uh, Ring in the Holiday. Uh, my good buddy, uh, Gemini888, um, went out and bought this this Christmas. Um, this is the Christmas WWE DVD. Um, and he basically said that it wasn't a must-own. It, it, it's like a few of the WWE Walmart exclusive DVDs, uh, like Brothers of Destruction or... Um, Oh, damn, what was that one DVD that Walmart came out with like uh, 10 years ago? Like, uh, it wasn't like top 50 moments, but it was like most electrifying moments. Or, you know, when Knuckleheads came out, they had an exclusive DVD at Walmart where it was called, um, um, I think it might have been just been called Knuckleheads at WWE or something stupid like that. But just DVDs you watch once and then you never watch ever again. This is probably going to be another one of those. Uh, toasted by none other than Mick Foley. And, um, oh shoot, what's his daughter's name? Noelle Foley. Uh, there you go. Um, you've got, you know, stupid stuff on here like Balls Mahoney uh, wrestling in, uh, in WB as Santa Claus, but it, but it was spelled with an X. He was a bad Santa. Um, you've got... Um, uh, what is this? Is this Cena versus Del Rio, where Del Rio kills uh, Santa? Uh, oh, baby. Wow. Alicia Fox there is Santa there in the middle for you. Um, there with, um, it's definitely Naomi, and that might be, I'm not sure who the blonde is there. Might be Emma, but I'm not sure. Uh, but we see the Boiler Room Brawl, Mankind versus Santa Claus from Monday Night Raw of 1999. Uh, we see Santa Claus versus Scott Taylor. Uh, we see Santa's Little Helper, a six diva tag match, Lisa Fox, Emma, Naomi. Oh, it is Emma. Oh, Paige, Cameron, and Summer Rae. Uh, then we see Tajiri versus Bubba Claus. Uh, we see Bobby Heenan ruins Christmas, uh, 1989 primetime wrestling. I'll take any primetime wrestling I can get on any DVD, so... Maybe I'll save this, and I'll check this out uh, come next Christmas. But, uh, you know, Bray Wyatt, uh, Dean Ambrose, Kofi Kingston, Paige. Uh, you've got John Cena. You've got uh, Hornswoggle, and you've got uh, Mick Foley. Uh, this is actually drawn by Jerry Lawler. Uh, you can see it down there in the corner. It looks like his art that we've seen in the past. But, uh, man, what a deal. 5, 10, 15, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 bucks. 25 bucks gets you three of these. When when these came out, I mean, I think this was on sale for 25, maybe 30 bucks when it was released. I know this one was 24.99 because I was looking to get in that when it first came out. Um, these ones probably uh, you know 20 bucks a piece uh, when they were first brand new. So I don't think I'm gonna go crazy like I did with the uh, TNA ones and only pick them up when they come out with this sale because we might not ever see a sale this good again. But uh, what a way! to catch up on my uh, my WWE DVD collection. Can't go wrong, guys. Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. Um, last night, I wanted to go back into the uh, wrestling history and watch some sort of wrestling. Uh, as you know, over the last little while, I've been trying to watch a lot more wrestling on the days where uh, basically I don't have anything to do. And... Um, you know, the one thing that I've been sort of watching is, like, classic wrestling from, like, uh, the 90s. We were watching some Saturday Night's Main Events. I believe we watched the Survivor Series. Um, we watched uh, Survivor Series 1992 uh, to see that horrible debacle, what's supposed to be the ultimate main event of the Ultimate Maniacs uh, versus uh, Ric Flair and Razor Ramon. But it ended up, you know... Ultimate Warrior got fired the week of the event, and he had to end up being replaced. Um, but um, last night, I made a bad choice. I have had this DVD in my collection, honestly, since about 2016, I believe this came out, um, in order to be on time for Christmas. And WB ran this on a $5 Friday. $5 Friday was an awesome deal that they used to do on WWE Shop all the time. They would uh, sell pops. They would sell um, older t-shirts. They would sell DVDs. They would sell Blu-rays. Um, it was just kind of like the way they wanted to clearance things out and get them out of the warehouse faster than just doing a normal clearance sale. And I was on those things. Uh, it really helped to keep my uh, DVD collection going because around 2016 is when the financial cr crunch at the Breach House. 
um, really started happening, and that's the reason why I had this. Um, it sat on the shelf uh, for damn near seven to eight years, I'm guessing. But last night, I said, WWE made that Christmas DVD, uh, and I want to check it out. I'm already into the Christmas movies. Uh, here we are in mid-November. I watched Planes, Trains, and Automobiles uh, last year. Uh, I found that one. That was a great movie that I, I hadn't seen in years, and I was like, oh, that's a Thanksgiving movie. I need to sort of watch that every year. And then right after that, I was like, I got I to gotta keep going here. So I jumped in. I watched uh, Four Christmases because I was thinking about that a while back um, with Tim McGraw in it and um, him being an actor. Uh, so I jumped into that. That led me to Fred Claus uh, with Vince Vaughn. But uh, Christmas, it's here. No tree yet, but me and the kids have committed to uh, Friday um, putting that up. But um, this here was a very bad choice. This DVE just went on and on and on. I want to guess that this might be an approximate runtime of three hours. This DVD did not need to be longer than an hour. Sometimes, you know, they 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 um they do these um DVDs um where it's just like they, you know the you know the kind that DVD has made in the past. There's no intro. There's no um you know selection screen that pops up. There's no menu. You just put it in and it just starts playing, and it's just a, a one hour best of. Uh, kind of thing. You don't need to skip around. But this one, it had match after match after match. And a lot of them weren't that good. And the one thing that grew on me more than anything else is that there was one really, really good match. Um, it was it was Randy Orton uh, versus uh, David Otunga. It was a miracle on 34th Street fight. Uh, I believe that match happened on SmackDown in, in uh, um, 2011, and they showed that one, and then I think they showed two more matches that they, they basically did the same thing. They ended up um, with um, John Cena versus Alberto Del Rio, and then it was Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt, which was the last match of 2014. The King, Jerry Lawler, who drew this very awesome drawing that is on the cover um, of uh, this is Ring in the Holiday, WWE's Greatest Holiday Matches and Moments. I started looking for this and I could not find it on the shelf, even though I knew I was looking for a, a Christmas selection. Um, I, I honestly thought it was called like WWE Christmas. Or something like this. But I, I, it took me a little bit uh, to find it. My DVDs in the WWE section are not in the best order. They haven't been that way, honestly, in a long time. I need to do a revamp on that entire side of the wall. But um, Jerry Lawler makes the same joke almost in every match that has a Christmas feel to it. That basically, oh, it also happened during the Damian Sandow versus Mark Henry match. The King says, when you stop believing in Santa Claus, that's when you start getting clothes for Christmas. And by the last time he said it, I didn't even want to finish the match. Um, the match, honestly, that fill, fills this out, it would probably be... One of the biggest matches, if it was a sort of shorter um, runtime, but it was the Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt, which happened uh, right before Christmas of 2014. Probably a week, maybe two weeks out of Ambrose and Bray Wyatt main eventing the TLC 2014 pay per view. Um, I've always said that wrestling in December uh, to me is kind of missable. I know that they ran the TLC pay-per-view um, for years um, in December, but this year as well as last year, WWE decided not to run 
um, a pay-per-view in the month of December. Nothing between Survivor Series and the Royal Rumble. I think, honestly, they're, they're learning. Um, people in that time of the holidays, they get packed. Um, you know, my work gets really busy. A lot of people, um, some people have real jobs where they actually get time off. Um, and, and there's just other things. There's always, you know, you gotta be going from family members to family members house because everybody has their way of celebrating and certain people they celebrate with and they don't want to miss people. So you're doing like Christmases on weird random days. And, the, and there probably is some wrestling fan out there who's like, I don't, I don't miss Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. Whatever day it's on, I am going to watch it. That's just not the way it works. And like in the heyday of like, me making videos here on YouTube uh, from like 2011 to 2014. I didn't barely watch anything. I just was working. Um, most of the time, by the time I got off, a pay-per-view was off, was over, or uh, WB Raw, I already missed it because of it being on the West Coast, not wanting to watch the rerun, and it just was like, I don't care. Um, it is what it is. Uh, I will tell you this much. The sort of... Uh, thing that strings all of the matches together uh, is Mick Foley and Noel Foley um, going to Santa's Village, I believe is what it's called, in New Hampshire. It reminded me, I'm not going to say it's as good as, but it reminded me a lot of Bobby the Brain Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon on like the USA a uh, weekend show, whether if you called it uh, All American Wrestling, whether if you called it um, Wrestling Challenge, um, those skits that they used to do, where they would be on a cruise, or they'd be at the casino for WrestleMania Four, um, whether they um, were at the miniature golf course, whether there was always some hijinks going on with the, the, the show would end with Gorilla getting the better of Bobby Heenan. Um, we all watched that show back in the day. It was jobber match after jobber match. Um, and the most entertaining thing was the skits that happened in between. It reminded me of it. It's not as good as, um, I don't know. At one point they find Santa Claus and Santa Claus looks less like Santa than McFoley looks as Santa. Um, I didn't think Santa was that good, but they might, they probably filmed this in like March or April to get it out in time for the holidays and Santa wasn't in uh, Santa duty. Um, but um, like I said, really, really long. Um, not the most memorable things on this. It's pretty missable, honestly, to tell you the truth. And I remember uh, that when Jim made a video for this, uh, when it first came out, he basically said the same thing and I should have listened to him. Uh, DVD opens with a match from, uh, 1999. I would have thought it happened on, like, an episode of, like, of, uh, WWE Sunday Night Heat. But I guess it was from Monday Night Raw, it says. Uh, Mankind has a boiler room brawl with Santa Claus. Where Mankind is booked in this match, says that he knows it has to happen. Uh, so he goes into the boiler room, ends up running into Santa Claus. And, um, him and... Santa kind of like say, hey, everything's cool. We don't have to do this. And next thing you know, Mankind's jumped by three Santas. Um, those Santas were like WWE extras. And extras from like the late 90s don't even look like wrestlers. But but um, it ends up after he beats those guys up and he's trying to leave, he gets jumped by the outlaws. Uh, and it turns into a whole, whole ordeal with basically Mankind versus... Santa Claus DX's. Um, pretty fun uh, way to kick this off, um, but it dies uh, pretty fast. We go from there to the um, match from uh, JBL versus Mick Foley. Um, that happened on a tribute for the troops over in Iraq. You see the match happen where JBL is playing Santa Claus and uh, basically... Is going to cancel all the holidays. He starts getting booed. And then Mick Foley as Santa comes down to make the save. Um, we have a very fast Superstars match of Santa Claus. Uh, who was Balls Mahoney. Um, before he was Balls Mahoney. When he was in WWE. And they gave him the gimmick of Santa Claus. Uh, with an X and a K. 
Uh, and he was the opposite bad Santa who wore black and red. I believe he was managed by Ted DiBiase. Where I, they were going with that, I got no clue. Because the match that they chose aired December 23rd, 1995. What was his gimmick going to be come March, April? Were they going to bring in a bad, uh, you know, uh, Easter bunny <laughs> for him to fight? I got no clue. Uh, from there we go to Tajiri versus um, Bubba of the Dudley Boys, uh, both dressed as Santa Claus, having a match on Monday Night Raw. Uh, we got Bobby Heenan ruins Christmas on primetime wrestling, uh, where he's trying to portray Santa, but also trying to tell all the kids uh, that are watching. This aired actually on Christmas night on primetime wrestling. Yes, primetime wrestling was what Monday Night Raw was, so this aired between 9 and 11, and how many kids were really watching? I'll tell you, in 1989, I wasn't watching primetime wrestling. Uh, I wish I would have been, um, but it is kind of taboo that Heenan was saying Santa uh, is not real and ends up pissing off Roddy Piper. Uh, Roddy Piper is on a set that looks like he's supposed to be at his house. Gets so upset that he walks off the set and walks over to the desk set that Heenan's on and beats the hell out of him to end the show. <laughs> um, but but he's portraying to all the kids that you know believe in Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Hey, he's not calling him Santa. It's Santy. Santy Claus is the way the Piper's pronouncing it. Uh, we get a surprise on Monday Night Raw of. Um, Santino Morella and Beth Phoenix challenging John Cena and a mystery partner. Um, John Cena comes out and basically says that Santa Claus uh, granted his wish. They're in Toronto, and his present is Trish Stratus making her return after she had left WWE. Um, I believe she had been gone for about a year or two years at that point, so this was a big return for her. Um, wrestles in the main event. They pick up the win. Uh, Kofi uh, versus Tyson Kidd. Um, I don't really know why this match was on there other than uh, the announcers. Uh, Michael Cole um, was dressed up as uh, like a reindeer. And Kofi goes over and basically punks uh, Michael Cole for the reindeer head and nose. And puts it on in the match. Gets the win. Um... We got the Miracle on 34th Street fight, or uh, Orton versus Otunga. Match gets broken up by uh, Wade Barrett. Otunga tries to retreat, and Randy Orton is throwing presents as him as he runs up the stage. Pretty good match. Um, we have an All I Want for Christmas Battle Royal. Uh, that was won by Hornswoggle uh, when he basically tricked Sheamus um, into getting eliminated uh, to get the win, and then basically his present that he asked Santa for for winning the match he ended up uh, asking for the ability to speak um which really surprised um Roddy Piper and Dusty Rhodes who ended up uh putting back their spiked eggnog uh because they they were drunk enough it seems um what the fuck was it was an accident I believe it was an accident is what set up the miracle on 34th street fight between John Cena and Alberto Del Rio when Del Rio was making his entrance on Monday Night Raw and ran over Santa Claus with his car. Uh, they basically said that Santa needed to get uh, transported to a local hospital, um, that he was not looking good, but it ends up Mick Foley as Santa makes his return um, during the match. John Cena gets the win. All of us go home uh, happy. The one thing that's you know, funny about the miracle on 34th Street is that they filmed this when they used to give WWE wrestlers like a two-week break for Christmas to New Year's. No, it's not till New Year's because they always did the garden show like right after Christmas. But they would give them like two weeks off, which is like pretty much for a lot of the guys the longest break that they get of the year. And they filmed this. Del Rio is a heel. When they come back, Del Rio is automatically a magical baby face somewhere along the way he wins the world heavyweight championship and he's like the champion as a baby face on smackdown to kick off the uh the, the new year I, I i still don't remember what why or how they did that but you one day bad guy next day good guy 
best guy he can be. I don't know. Um, we had Good Santa versus Bad Santa. Mark Henry versus Damian Sandow. Um, Christmas on a Pole, where Fandango wins an Intercontinental Championship match on the next edition of Monday Night Raw, where he takes on Big E. Um, we had a Divas match, which I think they really needed more of. Um, it was Alicia Fox, Emma, and Naomi wrestling against Paige, Cameron, and Summer Rae. I did not understand or remember why Paige, who I always kind of remember as always being a baby face, was wrestling with the heels. But maybe that's just how many divas they had on the card that night. Uh, and then it finishes off with Ambrose versus Wyatt. Honestly, really should have been um, a really good match. But I think after three hours... Of watching WWE Christmas matches. I was just done. Uh, those guys had main evented the TLC 2012. Uh, sh uh, 2014 show. Probably a week. Maybe two weeks beforehand. Uh, and they, they went all out. They used the Christmas presents. They used the wreath. They used this that, and the other. Uh, and Bray Wyatt. Yeah. I think Bray Wyatt ends up being the one who got the win in that match. Which was kind of surprising that the heel did. But um, there we go. Ring in the holidays. I'm going to tell you the truth. It wasn't good. It wasn't great. I wouldn't tell you to pop this in uh, on your March to Christmas. It is what it is. I'm sure it lives on a lot of people's uh, DVD shelves just like mine. And I'm glad that I got to bust mine out. I ripped off the wrapper to put this sucker in. and It was pretty dusty. Peace out, guys. See you all down the road.